Welcome ladies and gentlemen, this is Voodoo15 here, and uh, I'm going to change it up a bit this go around. This is going to be a, a tutorial, and I'm not going to go into a lot of uh, BS there. We'll just go ahead and get started. Uh, what we're going to do is we're essentially going to try and get you in the air, first thing, because most folks say come into the game, and you want to get in the air, you want to get into a fight. So we're going to show you how to do that. You have my cursor here. What I'm going to do is you're going to click on the hangar. Go to the hangar. And uh, these are numerous aircraft here, and the best thing I can suggest to you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through each and every aircraft one by one and do like a two, three minute video over each one. But for today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to click on the Sea Fire Mark II C. And I'll basically show you your options once you've selected an aircraft. We're going to start here. You have three positions you have armament, center point, and it'd be wing points. This aircraft has no coordinates for your wing points, but it does have a center point. You have a 30 gallon slipper tank and a 500 pound bomb. And when you click on one of these items, you'll notice that it is then attached to the aircraft. And this is overall fuel spanning from 100% being full tank to 25% being a quarter of a tank internal fuel. I'm going to go 50% a slipper tank and seeing as there's only one setup for guns, I'm going to go for that setup. Here on your clipboard you have several different options that you can do. Here you see skin. By having this enable auto skin download check marked like this, it will download skins in the background while you're playing on the game. So it's best unless you have a really poor internet connection to leave that check mark so that you're constantly downloading skins. Now once you've downloaded some skins you then click on this drop down box and select which one you want. And it will change as you pick the different aircraft or the different skins. If you'd like a better look, you can simply press this button here, Convergence, which will then put you kind of behind the aircraft. And this is where you're going to set up the convergence of your guns, which we'll discuss later. You can then press your uh, Function 8 or F8 button, the number 4 on your keypad and the number 8 on your keypad, and it'll point you left and downward, and you can actually take a closer look at your skins. See which one you really like. Pick a good color. I prefer 809 little shark teeth on the front. And when you're done, you just click on Convergence again. Now, here on your clipboard, you have several different locations that you can click on. Northeast, East, Southwest, West, and Hangar. Hangar will launch you across the field. And you have to be careful if you pick that option because it will launch you from a hangar and there might be a gun emplacement or trees or God only knows what in front of you. For this go around, I'm going to select Northeast. Simply click on it one time. You'll notice auto takeoff is enabled. I have throttle at zero. And everything that I say is going to be based on someone who has a joystick. So if you're a mouse user, I apologize. I, I don't know how to run the mouse. So you kind of SOL. I'm going to bring up the clipboard by pressing the escape key. And now I have my cursor. And I'm going to simply walk you through your gauges and dials here. This here is your flap indicator. As you'll notice, it says up. If you press Q, I had to remember it for a minute, you'll notice that this moves, you'll hear a sound, and it says down. If you look out the left side of your aircraft, right side of the aircraft, you'll notice this small deal right here. It's a flap indicator. It lets you know that your flaps are down. You then press W, flaps come back up. I have to be below a certain airspeed. With the all Spitfires, it's 160 miles an hour indicated right here. This is your speed gauge in miles per hour. To be below 160 to do that. So here's your speed gauge. This is your artificial horizon, with this being level ground and this being the plane where you're we're looking at here. You then have your climb and descent meter here. Positive meter climbing, negative meter going towards the ground. This is your RPM gauge here. Boost, which is essentially your RPMs, or RPMs hits here, and then uh, manifold. Oil pressure. When you start to, uh, when you take an oil hit, this gauge will slowly drop down until it reaches zero, at which time your engine will seize and you'll be coasting. This is your temperature gauge. If you take a radiator hit, you will occasionally take radiator hits in a Spitfire. You'll notice this gauge will climb into the red. Once it climbs into the red a good ways, the engine will die. So if you take a radiator hit, it's good to uh, keep an eye on this little gauge so that you can shut your motor off and maybe coast it in the last few minutes. 
If you use uh, War Emergency Power, which we'll discuss later, this will also climb into the red until it reaches probably the first tick mark, and then it will automatically shut it off. This is your fuel gauge. It's currently reading EXT for external fuel, and it's telling me that my fuel, external fuel tank, the 30 gallon slipper, is still full. This red tick mark tells me what my internal fuel is sitting at. It's at a half a tank. So once this burns off, I can then go to my 50% of internal fuel. Here you'll notice it says gear. You have two green lines indicating that both landing gear are down. If you have two red lights, that means those landing gear are gone, destroyed. And if the lights are non-illuminated, not green, that means that they're up. This aircraft is a carrier-based aircraft, so it has a tail hook. You'll notice that this is not indicating anything, so it is up. If you press Shift G, you'll notice that it suddenly glows green. This means and tells me that the tail hook is down. Shift G again, and the tail hook comes up. This is your game clock. This tells you what the time for the arena is. Not your local time, but what the time for the in-game clock is. It says noon. Uh, it's not really important most of the time. You have a acceleration meter here. I don't particularly use it. Some other folks do, guys who do uh, other things. You then have auto and beacon. Auto is your autopilot. Currently this is red, which means it will be auto climb. Since we're in auto takeoff, that's what it will be doing, is taking off. Beacon, you really don't want this to flash. If the beacon is flashing, that means your internet connection is lagging. It will flash yellow and green. You then have elevator indicator rudder and ailerons. Ailerons being these on the sides, rudder being this jobby in the back, and elevators being these. And those are some floating trucks. So, elevators in the back, rudder in the back but pointing straight up, and ailerons on the sides. Now we're going to page down a little bit and over a little bit so we can get a better view. You'll notice here it says 1400 and MG. This tells you that you have 1400 rounds of machine gun and 240 rounds of cannon. This will decrease over time until it reaches zero, in which case you'll be out of ammo. This also this indicates that my combat trim is on. If you're just starting out, I would suggest leaving it on until you learn. You have your compass and your turn and slip indicator. And that is your basic setup here. So now what I'm going to do is best to leave auto takeoff on. If you have a brand new joystick, what I would suggest you do is go to Options, Controls, and Calibrate Joystick. And what you're going to do is just simply follow the directions. Move your throttle, rudder, and joystick through their full range of motion. So I'm going to pull back on the stick, and I'm going to go in a circular motion, just uh, contacting every stop on the joystick. I'm going to do this in I don't want to. Four or five times is enough, but I do it 10, 12, 15 times. Just BSing. I do it a number of times and I get tired of it. I stop, I let it center. And I have a twisty stick. If you have rudder pedals and you want to move your rudder pedals through their full motion, I'm just going to simply twist the stick, trying to minimize movement of the joystick in other directions. I just want it to twist back and forth, left and right. Once I'm done with that, then I'm going to full throttle and no throttle back and forth several times make sure it's good and calibrated place it back at no and I'm click on OK and back now press escape again to drop the clipboard now what I'm going to do is apply full throttle you notice that your RPM and the boost engage and the aircraft takes off on its own this is the best thing to do if you're starting off and you really just want to get into a fight simply take off and let the aircraft get up in the air. Once you're up in the air, let it get up away from the ground a little bit and you want to slowly press forward on the stick until the auto takeoff comes off. The aircraft will push and kind of can around based on where the torque from the engine is going to push it left or right depending on which model aircraft. And what you want to do, I'm in the training arena right now which is a good place to start. Pick an aircraft, we'll bank to the left a little bit and I'm going to slowly pull back on the stick Keeping the nose a little bit high because I'm going I'm to maintain my airspeed about 150, or that's 170 right there, 180 actually. And I'm going to pitch around here. I have a hat switch on my joystick, so I'm just going to look around. 
Aces, I was pretty good about defaulting everything to basic stuff. You'll have to set up any buttons you have, but the joystick itself, trigger-wise, throttle-wise, and control-wise should operate normally, and hat, except for up. I think you'll have to fix that, which we'll go over at another time. Now, alright, say I drain my external fuel tank. I no longer want to use it. I'm going to press the backspace button, and if you look at the bottom, where you see the joystick moving in the on the screen, Notice where it says CAN and CAN. I'm going to press the backspace button one time, and you'll see it says DT and 33. That means I have 33 gallons left in my drop tank. Now, press the backspace, and I'm going to press B, as in Bravo. Now it's gone. Notice it says zero. Press the backspace again and go back to Cannon. Now it means I've lost this extra weight, but I've also lost that extra fuel. As you'll notice, my fuel gauge in the lower right-hand corner now says BTM for bottom, and I'm at half a tank. The white, the large white indicator tells me how much fuel I have in that particular tank, and the red tick mark that's just below it tells you how much total fuel you have left. So, I'm going to strafe something right quick, that little bar in there. I'm going to reduce throttle a little bit, pitch back in, get a little bit of blackout. I'm going to press Z to zoom in. Z is in Zoro, Zulu, and uh, we're in somebody's day. So you've gone out, you've tried to do your little fighting, you're shot up a little bit, you know, and you're ready to come back. So I'm going to reduce throttle. And I'm going to generally line up with the runway. Now, keep an eye on your speed, which is located there just to the left of your artificial horizon. At 160 miles an hour, which is what I'm at right now, you're going to go ahead and press your Q button. You'll hear that sound, followed by the flap lever moving downward. Now you're going to press G as in golf, and this is going to lower your gear down. You'll notice two green indicators, hopefully. As you come in, you're going to kind of let it coast in and apply throttle gradually. And utilize rudder if you have it, or if not, just kind of move the nose until it kind of lines up with where you want. Just kind of coast in. Just let the aircraft kind of do its own thing. As you come in, just ease off on the throttle. Main thing is, now when you start to come down, pull back on your stick. This will lock your tail wheel to prevent a ground loop, which is, I'll show you what a ground loop is right now. So when you have a lot of throttle and you're going to suddenly do like this. And usually the aircraft will spin all the way around. If that starts to happen, say you're, you're coming along and you're moving pretty fast, it starts to ground loop and you can't really control it, you're going to want to give it some throttle. You just goose it a little bit. You pull back on that stick and it'll lock your tail wheel in a straight position and the aircraft won't turn as easily. Now you can still rudder turn. I'm going to apply some throttle here, get it to turn how I want it to. But it won't turn as easily, like I've let off the stick now and now it's just turning free. You be careful though because you will tear off your wings on the sides. Now space bar is both brakes, locks both brakes up. You have separate brakes which are Charlie and Victor, C and V. C for left, V for right. And that is your basic takeoff and landing procedures for a Spitfire, or Seafire rather. Uh, comments please, uh, ways I could be better. Um, e, echo, turn your motor off. If you're going to come in to land, the main thing you want to do is make sure you get it on concrete, which you see right now I'm on concrete. Any concrete, anywhere, as long as it is friendly controlled, is a successful landing. Now, press your escape, and you can either click on in sortie, which will immediately send you back to the tower at the airfield you're at, or you can press the slash on your keyboard. It'll bring up your text buffer. You can type in dot EF, echo foxtrot, and press the enter button. And it ends, and you should get a you've landed successfully message. Uh, and that is your basic takeoff and landing in a Seafire. Uh, questions, comments, anything like that, uh, ways I can improve, uh, things I didn't explain that you wanted explained, or questions that you have, please feel more than free to post them. And uh, I check all my stuff every day, usually several times a day. I really don't have much else to do between work and this. So questions, comments, concerns, please post them. I like the feedback. Anyway, I hope this has helped uh, someone out.
in getting in the air and shooting at some folks. And, uh, yeah, I think that about covers it. All right.